Okay, well, we're here with uh, Hans, uh, G0UPL uh, from uh, QRP Labs. A very popular kit you've been uh, making, and uh, it's a great success for you in terms of numbers you sold, Hans. Yeah, absolutely. So we started this, this was for the uh, kit project for the Build-A-Thon for the OTA 2017 summer camp uh, hosted by RSGB in UK last year. So then, 21st of August, it went on general sale. Uh, as you know, I spoke to ICQ podcast in Newark, end of September. So since the launch on the 21st of August, we've sold almost 5,000 of these kits. So it's been really, really busy. A phenomenal. I'm thinking I'm about 10 years older now than I was a year ago, <laughs> <laughs> last time we met. I, and I know certainly one of the things that we saw when we looked at the kits uh, last year was the phenomenal uh, build quality as well. Right. You know, the, yeah. the part component quality, etc. Mm -hmm. And I say such a high quality kit. Oh, and yeah. certainly even here at uh, Friedrich Sharp, we're seeing loads again leave the table sort of things. Well, it's really is a big success to, to the market, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the PCB is double-sided, through-hole plated, uh, silk screened. It's a professional quality PCB. Um, the components are all good quality. You know, we get samples first and test everything before putting them into the production. The manual gets a lot of you know, great feedback. This is 141 pages. Um, people are saying it's the best manual they've seen in decades and decades of kit building, including Heath kits. So the manual gets very good feedback. So. Yeah, I mean, people really appreciate the, the uh, quality and the price. And of course, all those manuals are available on, on the website. They, yes. People can download them, yeah. etc. when they're building the kits for now. Yeah. I do not supply a printed version. I wouldn't be able to do that <laughs> for the price. <laughs> no, there's also a German translation, and you know, from time to time, people contribute translations. So that goes on the website too. It's useful. Fantastic. Yeah. So the community is helping out as well with the Absolutely. translation, which yeah. is great. What goes into actually building a kit uh, for, for the amateur radio market, obviously, you know, in terms of, you know, the design process, etc. I mean, you know, what, just to take, talk through the vague process of when you're thinking about putting a kit together, what actually you, you do in part of that to bring it to, to someone like Freya Sharvin here yeah. to actually obviously sell to the market? Yeah. I mean, the first thing you need to do is understand what do people want, right? You have to design a kit that people are going to want to use and buy. Um, that is the difficult part because no one tells you that, right? And so, um, in the case of the QCX, it was a proposal I wrote for the RSGB for the Build-A-Thon for the OTA Summer Camp. And I wanted to build a CW transceiver that was both high performance and low cost, and easy enough that a group of young people with varying abilities would be able to construct it in a limited time scale and with limited equipment. So once you've got an idea of what you want to do, then you can start. Um, so I start with a prototype, usually a messy bunch of wires, and um, I try to look first also at what components are available, what components I'm going to put into it for low cost, high performance. Um, then you go through several stages of prototyping. You know, the, there's a lot of board houses now which produce PCBs at quite low cost. You go through several st iterations of building the boards, fixing the mistakes around yeah. and around. I usually finish the hardware first and then spend the last month or so on the firmware while the hardware is being manufactured. Um, and then last of all the printed documentation because that's something that's in email form anyway so it's yeah. easy like that. So yeah really it's first deciding what you want to do and, and then starting on the designing to achieve that but best cost and best performance. Usually as I go along I come up with some additional ideas that could be put into it. So this has a whisper beacon for example and it's just a bonus feature um, with a GPS interface that wasn't in the original idea but you think as you go along, well, I could add that, and there will be no extra hardware, but it will add an extra functionality. And then that becomes V2 or V3 or a well, no, I so that in the original one, but oh, you, right. you would be able to yeah, yeah. sometimes do a later versions. But this, in this case, was in the original one. And then things like the test equipment, that was also a later idea. Um, so I put, it's got a built-in frequency counter, signal generator, DVM, and RF power meter. And what, how that came about was because you know, I could, had this picture of 20 young people sitting in a room with very few instructors and very little test equipment and you getting to the point in manuals where it normally says okay use your signal generator and inject a signal and they won't have all of that there and so I decided to from that build all of that into the kit so yeah I think the, the, the process of producing a kit is an evolutionary sort of des design you come up with ideas as you go of what you could incorporate um, it's always a balance so you're always trying to balance cost uh, performance, features, board size, um, you leave out some things inevitably, so I mean, this doesn't have AGC for example, yeah. that was left out for the sake of cost, um, so whether or not you need AGC and CW, it, it, people debate that, 
Yeah. Uh, I've found I don't, but maybe some people do. Exactly. Well, it's, to be very honest, the fact is you really need to come and see hands up one of these shows. You know, have a look at the kits, have a look at the quality. But to be honest, guys, it's difficult to get to you. The queues are long back off your yeah. table all the time. You know, it's always very I'm difficult. Sorry, you have to, to wait so long. <laughs> we have to wait, but it's, it's worth waiting for. But of course, the other option is to go to your website and order yes. for the website. So the yeah. website address that everyone know about is it's qrp-labs.com. Okay, and the hyphen's obviously important. Qrp-labs.com. <laughs> the reason for the hyphen is that you know, there, when you try and reserve a domain. Some domains have like $2,000 cost for the domain name, and QRP Labs was one of those without the hyphen. Yeah. So <laughs> I put the hyphen in and it became $10 suddenly. You know? <laughs> and at that time, it was much earlier in, in the uh, QRP Labs history. And so, uh, you know, the thing hadn't grown as big as it now is. And so it was, it was. Um, important to keep the cost down you know Wonderful. well I can see here a queue of customers line up here so I'm going to uh, uh, wish you continued success and uh, thanks a lot for your time as always and uh, we hope you catch up with you soon and uh, who knows what comes next for QRP Labs Absolutely. thanks a lot yeah, I've got uh, several new things in development so um, they'll come out later later this year perhaps and start uh, start coming out so thank you very much Fantastic. for your time enjoy the rest of the show fantastic you too we look forward to it